it's me, Bussy, and welcome back to Hot or Rat. The RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star Season 6 cast was just announced, including a record-breaking 13 queens. Today we're gonna be breaking down their sunrise-themed promo looks, their entrance looks, discussing some drama brewing between Icaria C. Davenport and Serena Chacha, and talking about why Adore Delano declines participation on this season. We've got a lot to talk about, but first I do wanna quickly call out some shady journalism. The Vulture published an article entitled, RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star Season 6's definition of all-star is, um, inclusive. Which went on to say, let's just say it stretches the term all-star to a breaking point. Another online publication, Jezebel, published an article entitled, What is going on with these RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star Season 6 casting decisions? And yeah, everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but there's just no need to say that the queens on this reality TV competition don't deserve a spot because they're not stars. It's just not productive or helpful, especially on the brink of Pride Month. Personally, I want to give a huge round of applause to the casting team. The cast of All-Star Season Season 6 is diverse, trans-inclusive, and star-studded with queens of all shapes and sizes. Anyways, that's enough ranting for today, so let's go ahead and get started with a quick message from today's video sponsor. Philo. Philo is a live cable TV streaming app that allows you to watch shows while they're airing, and it has built-in DVR so you can record shows and then go back and watch them later and skip through commercials. Philo has over 60 channels built into it, like HGTV, MTV, VH1, Comedy Central, Nickelodeon, and more, so you can watch all your favorites like SpongeBob, House Hunters, Catfish, and even rewatch classics like RuPaul's Drag Race and Futurama. Plus, switching to Philo can save you hundreds on your traditional cable bill. And when you use my deal, your first First month is 30% off, only $14, and then $20 a month after that. And you can watch Philo on all of your devices. Androids, iPhones, computers, Apple TVs, Fire TV sticks, Chromecasts. If you have a gizmo, they have an app. Philo is literally the perfect cure for self-isolation boredom, or a casual night of Philo and chill. So, what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description of my video to try Philo for free for seven days and get 30% off your first month. Thanks so much to Philo for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into it. First up, the one, the only, the Baldi. It's Akaria C. Davenport who competed originally on season 11 and finished as a finalist. And I know y'all are as thirsty for this drama as I am in the middle of the club at 2 a.m. on a Friday night, so let's start with that. A few weeks ago, Akaria went live to talk about the wig that she's actually wearing in this promo photo, saying this. Do y'all see this hair? I didn't dance in this hair. I didn't do nothing but simply take pictures. This is how the back of the ponytail looked from day one. Not only that, I asked for no glitter. It's glitter all through the damn hair. And guess who she got it from? Yes, yeah, Serena Cha Cha. I don't know. She has the audacity to tell me that she don't give refunds. And, and Serena has yet to reply or say anything about this publicly. Anyways, despite her issues with the wig, I do think it looks pretty good in this photo. And Akaria herself looks absolutely stunning. I love the little ruffled collar thing coming all the way down the back. And you know the reason she put mirrors all over that cat suit is that so when you're in her presence, you can see just how ugly you are. This look is. And if you thought that was good, get into her entrance look, mama. She walks into the workroom sparkling head to toe, looking like the only honeycomb goddess, complete with this like perfect little beehive on top of her head. And remember, Akaria is no stranger to turning looks. She had some excellent runways in her original season. Remember her fringe and gold runways? It's crazy that she looked excellent then and has found a way to amp up her style and fashion even further. This look is out with an A-W, like, like how she spells Baudi. Next up, yes, you can call her Jiggly, just not before 8 a.m. <laughs> I am so freaking excited for this queen. She is an OG of the franchise, having competed all the way back on season four of Drag Race. And yeah, she may be known for like hot potato couture and finishing in eighth place, but this is a glow up. Wow. She says since her original season, she's lost 50 pounds, gotten new teeth, come out as a trans woman, and is now wearing human hair. Get into it, mama. I really could not be more proud of her and excited for her journey. Yeah, this look is hot. As for Jiggly's entrance, equally beautiful. And yeah, she has invested in hair. She looks gorgeous. It is a little less draggy and maybe more pedestrian, but I don't think that that's totally bad because the look still does look super expensive. It's very like evening cocktails on a New York City rooftop. And reading into the edit of this little entrance cut that they gave us, they were focusing on her laughing a lot. So I'm thinking she's going to be playing a narrating role in the season, which means she could be going far. Can't wait to see what you do. This look is hot. Next up, are you feeling the jantasy? Or maybe the face crack? <gasps> Say crack again. 
it's Jan, who we just saw on season 12 and finished in eighth place. I'll be honest here, I'm a little bit nervous for Jan because she had such a great edit on season 12 and fans fell in love with her. It's gonna be a challenge for her to keep that up, being so confident and even going as far as like calling herself the villain in her interview. Cockiness is good in drag, but girl, ask Miss Cracker, ask Alaska, too much of it won't just bite you in the ass. Anyways, her promo look is Gagatrandra. She took that sunrise theme and ran right into the sunset with it. <laughs> It's also very Phoenix rising from the ashes, which is a great metaphor for who she is and what her drag represents. It's definitely and if you're thinking, hmm, this kind of looks familiar. It was actually made by Bunny B. Fly from Drag Race Thailand, who also recently made Scarlet Adam's sea sickening runway. As for her entrance look, she is ready for the slumber party. She's giving me some Ash Nico hitting the club for performance vibes. This took me a second to warm up to just because it was so different from how I perceived Jan. Like I was kind of hoping to see her make a reference to her original entrance look or maybe even her like iconic face crack moment, but I do like this. This look shows like a a fresher, younger side of Jan that's paying attention to pop culture trends. And for that reason, I think it's hot. Next up, it's Raja O'Hara, another season 11 queen who finished ninth on her season. This is the season of personality. The narrating that we're gonna get in confessionals, the clash of these personalities that we're gonna get in the workroom is going to be unlike any other season ever. Her promo look came out to tell us that she is a star. She's the star of the sun. And I do like this look a lot. The yellow is a beautiful color on her complexion. I think this look is also a great glow up from what we saw on her original season. And this glow up is glow hot. As for her entrance, she walked into the workroom, name on her boots first. I love the self branding there and everything going on with the bodice and train. However, I will say I'm not a huge fan of the blue neoprene sweatshirt thing. I think if she had taken the sweatshirt off and then given just like three or four more inches to the top part of that bodice to cover her chest a little more, it would have been perfect. I'm going to leave this entrance look at a warming up. Next up, third time, third, can y'all believe that? For our glamour toad, Ginger Minj, who originally competed and finished as a finalist on season seven and finished in eighth place on All Stars 2. She's the first queen to be returning to an All Star season, having also competed on a previous All Star season that was not All Stars 1. Her promo look is cute. It's cute. She's got this kind of like showgirls meets old school glamour thing going on. If I could change just one thing, I think it'd be the hair. Cause it's kind of like Southern Belle wearing a giant bump it, which doesn't totally vibe with the more like dancey costume nature of the rest of her fit. But overall, I think she looks really good. This look is hot. However, <laughs> The thing with Ginger is, she's one of my favorite queens. Charisma, uniqueness, nerve, talent, she has it all. But there's also like this new element to drag. I think that she is still kind of finding her footing in and it's looks. I understand the Glamour Toad reference. I love that for her, but mama, this is drag of the future levels of atrocity. <laughs> Ginger, Ginger, why? Why did she do this? there is a way to do this kind of like animalistic costume type of drag. Look at Coco Jumbo, Bandilla Krim, but the way this fits her and then the pieces are kind of like misplaced and then there's like strange chaps with it. It's just not finished looking. But then again, Ginger's not dumb. She could just know that everybody's going to talk about this and that's why she wore it. Conspiracy theories. This look is a rat. Next up, Eschapalante. It's Yara Sofia. Another queen on her third time around the block. She originally competed on season three, finishing fourth, and then again in All Stars 1, finishing in fifth slash sixth on her team. This is another queen I think a lot of my new school drag race fans may not have appreciation for, but they just don't make them like they used to make Yara. She can be spooky, glamorous, both spooky and glamorous. She always has crazy hair. I don't know how she does it all, but she does. Her promo look is giving me a little bit of like armored cockatoo meets red Power Ranger realness. It's weird. Weird, but that's why I love it. Jada always does weird things that are super cool and have elements of high fashion, like those little armor pieces that you might see like on a Moogler runway or something. Anyways, her promo look, Kaka 2, Kaka hot. And the animalistic thing that we often see in Jada's drag continues in her entrance look. She's giving me high fashion pup play glamazon. <laughs> and after all these years, of course, still serving body like it's her job. Well, I suppose it is. This bitch is hot. 
it. Next up, munch, munch, crunch, crunch, and Silky Nutmeg Ganache, our queen of food, who finished as a finalist on season 11. Say what y'all want about Silky, but she gives good TV and she knows it. And this promo look is sickening. Look how she ate in this. It's gorgeous. She's giving me like Wonder Woman goddess vibes and it appears she has changed her makeup routine up a little bit. Maybe not painting her eyebrows with Sharpies anymore. Anyways, this look is hot. Her entrance into All Stars, iconic. No one has ever pulled a glass of milk out of her titties. Like what? What? It, what? What? Queen of cooking, queen of cookies, queen of food. She also looks gorgeous. This is a beautiful blue gown on her. She's giving me like Cookie Monster Glamazonian Womana. These cookies, I'll take two. As long as she keeps them warm in her special area. This look is Next up, the old school queen of getting robbed, it's Pandora Box. She originally finished fifth on season two and then went home first on All Stars 1. Dude, she has been needing a redemption for so long. And I will say everything happens for a reason. She has taken all of this time and clearly studied her craft, gotten better, has 10 times better makeup skills than she ever had, and looks more gorgeous than she did. How many years ago was that? One, two, three hundred? I mean, wow. I love the dress, I love the coat, the ruffles, the colors on her her that beautiful high pony. She looks hot. My only concern for Miss Box is that she's very smart. She's cerebral and I think in a competition with so many big personalities, it could be easy for them to overshadow her. Oh, and her entrance look equally as stunning. Those sculpted waves on her, amazing. It's like old school Hollywood glamour. She is ready for her Emmy. This look is hot, hot, hot. Next up, speaking of robbed, it's Scarlet Envy. She originally finished in 10th place of season 11, which as a reminder had 15 queens. So like, it's not quite the same as finishing 10th in a season that has like 12. Anyways, there is like an effortless elegance that Scarlet has always had. She's now even more refined. I've been watching her glow up on Instagram and posting all kinds of insanely beautiful looks, not to mention some hot thirst traps. Anyways, like I was saying, this look is very, I just woke up like this, call the maid, I'll be in the city today. And I'm also envious of the bare leg thing that she and so many other queens are doing right now. A, because y'all never are ever gonna see my legs on camera, and B, even if you did, I wouldn't shave them. So I just don't care to do that. <laughs> this look is hot. As for her entrance look, Scarlett is ready for another day in the sun. It's very like Lana Del Rey goes to the Kentucky Derby on a tie-dye acid trip vibes. It's pretty. Tie-dye is not my personal favorite thing. Like in that sense, I would never wear this look, but in a different fabric, I would. So yeah, this look is hat. I I mean, hot. The only thing I wanna point out though, she's already selling merch that has the phrase she was saying in her confessional, the feeling is mutual. That makes me nervous because it tells me she's either very smart and ready to sell some shit, or she's very smart and going home early and wants to capitalize on all the time that she has on our TVs. Next up, it's Serena Cha Cha, who originally competed in season five and went home in 13th place. I truly never thought there would be a day that we would see this queen on All Stars, but considering the storylines that are happening with a lot of these queens being they either have something to prove or they have something to show off. I think she fits well in the cast. Of course, being in the I have something to show off and prove categories. All of that aside, we also can't forget that she kind of pioneered not wearing boobs in drag, like which is now a staple for at least half of the queens that are on the show. This promo look I can get behind about 90% of the way, of course, ending at the neck. I love the like flamenco matador vibes that are going on here with all the beating and fringe. It's absolutely gorgeous. But then you get up to the head head and I'm like, girl, what is happening? She's got on this like beautiful straight blonde hair and then plopped on top of that. <laughs> The two craziest hair horns that frankly make no sense with the rest of the look. Those things on her head are a rat, but chop them off and we've got a look that is hot, hot, hot. And when she comes into the entrance room, she takes another opportunity to show us all this new beautiful fashion in her closet. I love this uh, matador thing even more. The silhouette and shapes that she has found in expressing her drag are gorgeous on her body. And both of these looks are rich with cultural influence, which yeah, I'm jealous of. I matadu think this look is but will she make it far? What do y'all think? Her not giving that refund to Miss Acaria Davenport for that hair tells me that she probably didn't leave with much prize money. Next up, oh my God, she spins me right round, right round like a record baby. 
<laughs> it's Kylie Sonique Love. She originally competed on season two, finishing in ninth place. We last saw her on that Christmas special from a couple years ago. She is our famous first to come out as trans queen from the franchise and the glow up that this queen has had, oh, it is just mind blowing. And while a lot of these queens have something to prove to the fan base or maybe even to the judges, Kylie kind of just has a lot to show off. So for that reason, I'm predicting good things for her. This look is like the most expensive showgirl in the world vibes. And yeah, it is super simple, but I just love how elegant the little like metal mesh chain stuff hangs off of her beautiful body. Kylie might have me questioning my sexuality, but I'm not questioning this look is absolutely hot. And her workroom entrance line is absolutely iconic. She walks in and she says, you've got female, which of course is a excellent pun and a jab at the history of the show. Back then when she originally competed, they were still doing the you've got she male thing. Again, another look that is pure 100% sex. I have no complaints and I just love how unapologetically she is serving and selling body sex and this <laughs> girl, woo! Honestly, I never knew if she would want to compete on Drag Race again, but I'm happy to see that she does and she is definitely red E. This look is Next up, the queen of sending bitches home. This one is a long time coming. It's Trinity K. Bonet, who originally competed on season six and went home seventh. She's a queen that I think really needed all this time to grow and sort of find herself. Infamously, Bianca was asking her like, what can you do successfully? <laughs> Trying to like prod the star out of her. Cause like we all saw the powerful person that was there competing in the competition, but I don't think she was ready to yet embrace that. However, that promo look is telling me that she she is, and I think All Star is gonna be such an excellent platform for her to showcase everything that she's learned. Anyways, yeah, this look is Stana Lina, and I think just an excellent example of the high drag pageantry that Trinity K. Bonet can do so well. It's hot. As for her entrance look though, it's a little disjointed for me. The hat and the sunglasses kind of hide her face too much. Like she's so pretty, I wanna see her face, not see it hidden behind accessories that honestly just aren't doing a lot here. Like the earrings, the glasses, and the lacy socks on the heels. I also was just surprised to see her take such a casual approach to her entrance. And Trinity, I love her so much, but I just don't like this look in particular. This one's gonna be a rat. Next up, even if you weren't looking for it, <laughs> she's gonna make damn sure you found it. It's Eureka, who of course competed on season 10, was disqualified for tearing her ACL in the cheerleading challenge, and then returned in season nine to finish as a finalist, where the big girl did not win. Never count your eggs before they hatch. Her promo look is giving me very honey boo boo all grown up. She looks beautiful. Eureka is one of those queens, I think, that doesn't get enough credit for how polished her looks and makeup are. This look is maybe not the most memorable of the promos, but you can't say she doesn't look beautiful. This look is hot. I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how Eureka uses this time on All Stars because she was super successful on the show and of course now I think is working on like the second season of her show with Bob and Shangela. Like, she's booked, blessed, and busy. Her entrance look though, where'd it go? Oh, found it. <laughs> She's giving me bloody Baroque camo cage skirt Antoinette realness. This look is so bizarre, yet so much fun and unique. And as always, super proportionized. We know she can turn looks, but can she turn herself into a winner this season? This look is hot. But what about Adora Delano? Turns out she could have been here too. She was invited, but said this about declining. Adore on All Star 6? No. They did contact me though. This is a little, little tea for you guys. But my talent number was too risky, I think. So maybe we'll get a door on All Star 7, 8, who knows. Anyways, what a cast. So much personality. They're also doing Untucked and everything starts on like June 24th on that new Paramount Plus streaming network. I'll be reviewing this entire season, so make sure to stick around, click that like button, hit subscribe, and also jump over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen, where you can join my patron family for just a couple bucks a month, support me in the channel, and in return, get exclusive member benefits like early access to my videos, exclusive videos, personal shout outs, access to the Bussy Queen Discord server, and more. My hottest for the promo looks goes to Kylie Sonic Love. I also asked my patrons to vote for their hottest hot and they voted for the Jantasy. And my hottest hot for entrance looks goes to the Bowdy, Icarius C. Davenport. Here, my patrons voted for Kylie Sonic Love. I wanna say thanks so much for watching this video and give a special shout out to Travis Lundy and David Welch who've just joined my Patreon at the hot tier. And Aiden, Ali Al, Bradley, Cameron, Cherry Poppins, Christopher, Claire Moosdale, Clark, Dorcha Leather, Fabio, Fractalize, Freddy, GJ Bearclaw, Cody P, Got the Morbs, J 
Hey, Jenny, Gen X, Jonah, Johnny, Kiki and John, Madame Muffy, Maddie Morissette, Nathan, Olympus, Mons, Venus, Opal, Queen, Sassy, Canister, Ron, Shannon, Shazzy, Sky, Sunshine, Tina, Thomas, Timotheus, Timothy, Tony, Unique, Vendetta, and Wheelie, who were all supporting me at my hottest here. And Angel, Caroline, Cyrus, Hope, JB, Joseph, JP in Dallas, Laura, Nurse Luca, Matthew, Mike, Rochambeau, Robert Reeves, Scooby Snacks, Sailor, Steven, Tom, and Triton, who were all supporting me at my Bussy Queen Collector tier. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Love ya. Bye.